Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS Inform. I'm your host, Bill Potter. Joining us through Zoom is State Representative Shane Lindauer, who represents District 63. State Rep, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. Uh, good to be here again. We're, we're always glad to have you take the time to talk with us. Uh, there's been some activity uh, this past week in the House that you'd like to talk about and a House bill that passed in the Senate you would like to talk about. Correct. Yeah. So we're, we're starting to get to that point now where, uh, as you just alluded to, some of the Senate bills are, are making their way through the House uh, just after halftime here. And we had a, a Senate bill 185 uh, that, that came over to us from the Senate that uh, I thought was particularly interesting, especially I've got some friends who this actually directly applied to um, um, that, that replies to home based vendors. So folks that are, uh, you know, making coffee or, or honey or those kind of things out of their home uh, that in the past they were not allowed to uh, uh, sell directly to uh, people via the internet or have deliveries made and things like that. So what we've tried to do here uh, in Senate Bill 185 is, is provide some flexibility for farmers and home-based vendors uh, to go ahead and, and, and do so to to uh, help them out and give them that flexibility. This is something that I think during again during COVID brought a lot of things to light. Right, that uh, uh, with supply chain disruptions, you know, nationally we rely so much on national supply chain and national producers um, having this ability to uh, you know uh, obtain products locally without red tape and hoops to jump through is really the impetus behind this bill and, and the driver behind this bill. So I, I think that uh, this was a, a good first step. I think there's going to be other things we look at here in this regard too, to, and again, just locally grown stuff, right? There's been a push for that prior to COVID uh, getting locally grown products in the hands of people uh, easier without, again, a lot of red tape, a lot of regulation to jump through. So I think this bill is a, a great, Great idea, uh, great first step, and I think maybe we will continue to look at this stuff in, in, in the next session going forward. So, again, just provide some, um, you know, some more accessibility to, to local. You know, we've got some coffee producers locally. Um, i got some friends in uh, uh, St. Anthony. The Wires are doing uh, stay-brewed coffee, and, and so they're, they're really interested in this, and then a lot of other folks as well. So uh, there's also a Senate Bill 400 that I was a uh, part of working on. And, and again, this, this is something that the legislature did. I think it was in 2017 or 18 that provided for the BMB, BMV to uh, the ability to provide electronic loans. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, liens and titles to do all that stuff electronically rather than having to go through the whole paper trail process. Uh, unfortunately, the BMV hadn't really uh, implemented that yet. So, we had Senate Bill 400 that we worked on that, that came over to us, and uh, that now provides some dates specific in which the BMV needs to get that program up and running. Again, the, the, the idea behind the bill is just to um, streamline the process, make it easier for for consumers uh, of, of these products, you know, auto dealers, banks, uh, you know, credit uh, credit agencies and things like that. This is going to really streamline the process for them and therefore streamline the process for their customers. So um, those are two of the bills that, that came over to us uh, this week. There's one more here I'm trying to find. Uh, Senate Bill 2 also passed out of the House. This was uh, really a companion to bill, the House Bill 1003 that we had early in session. Uh, so th there'll be some work done to... Uh, bring these two bills into uniformity but in a nutshell what it's done is it is made sure that through the this last year through covid the students who were e-learning or, or virtual learning uh, that actually in, in code in indiana code there was a problem with getting full funding to the schools to the brick and mortar schools if the students were were not in their seats right weren't actually in the building so this kind of fixes that to make sure schools will receive their full funding so schools won't be penalized, uh, you know, for, for COVID, for what happened this last year. So, um, th th again, I, I think uh, uh, that there'll be some work done to try to drive that with House Bill 1003 that went over to the Senate. But, again, the point of both bills is to make sure that, that schools are, you know, made whole um, and not penalized for the virtual learning that was done. And then we had uh, – 
House Bill 1006 uh, that passed that was over to the Senate, obviously, already. That was one of the first bills. I think it might have been the first bill that we passed out of the House. It's gone over to the Senate and, and passed out of there. And it, it provides, uh, I'm trying to find the number, $70 million worth of um, an $70 million appropriation to increase training for police to make sure they're properly trained. Uh, and, and also uh, provides a mechanism uh, where um, in the very, very few exceptions where there are bad actors in law enforcement, that agencies uh, across the board can communicate and, and weed out those bad actors. And, you know, we heard from law enforcement, the, the, the people most concerned with the back, bad actors in law enforcement are the other law enforcement agent, you know, the other, the other law enforcement officers. So, uh, they were really supportive of this as well to allow them a, a better mechanism. So those are really, I think, the four bills that were of most interest, I think, this week that we worked on. And, and, and uh, so anyway, that's that's kind of where we're at right now. And now, and now that those four bills have been passed, they will go to the governor for signature in July. Well, I guess he signs them now, but they become law in July. Well, I, honestly, it, it depends on what the bill said, and I don't have the actual writing. I think 1006 might have been effective upon passage, but uh, I, I think, again, 1006, uh, 1006 is uh, one that I think is going to be pretty streamlined. I think it'll, it'll be probably fast track, so it, it might go into effect a little quicker, but I don't have the dates in front of me as far as when they go in effect, but you are correct. That is a typical uh, date is usually in July, sometimes in January of the following year. Uh, but there are exceptions where a bill say will say uh, effective upon passage. And so it really at that point, if it's effective upon passage, it's as soon as when the, as, as soon as the governor signs it, it's it's a done deal. So, well, thank you very much once again for taking the time to talk with us. Hope we can talk to you again as the uh, you've got about a month left uh, of legislation at the state house. That that is correct. Yeah, we've we've got. Uh, yeah, you're right. About four or five weeks, six weeks, maybe something like that. But yeah, we're we're uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, its session has gone very well. I think, uh, you know, at, at the beginning of session, if you had asked me if we'd had, you know, gotten this far, this um, with this few stops or starts with with the covid uh, thing going on, I would have probably been incredulous to that claim. But it's so it's it's been a, it's been a, a pretty seamless uh, session for the most part. I think leadership has done a pretty good job of, um, you know, taking uh, uh, mitigating um, uh, steps, you know, to, to try to uh, make sure that there's not, you know, we're not spreading the virus and things like that. And, and so um, it's gone pretty well. All right. Well, thank you very much. We have been talking with state representative Shane Lindauer, who represents District 63 on 18 WJTS Inform. Thank you, state representative. And thank you to those who are watching. This is 18 WJTS. We are local people watching local people.